From Los Angeles to a worldwide audience, this is Boaz Power TV, where we take your life to the next level. Now, internationally known speaker and author, here's Boaz. Hi, welcome to the Power Show. You are part of the Power Nation. Here we take your life to the next level by helping you improve your attitude, your relationships, your finances, and your career. This is episode number 106. I call this four cab drivers and a wedding. This took place back in 2003. I was in Las Vegas for the wedding of a very special friend of mine. And during my two days in Vegas, I encountered four cab drivers who each seem to exemplify a different segment of society. Now, even though they were each driving a vehicle, they were heading down drastically and distinctively different roads in their lives. Using fictitious names, I'll identify them as Tom, Harry, John, and Robert. So Tom picked me up at the Mirage Hotel for the ride to the Saturday evening wedding at the Liberace Mansion. Now, I've always been interested in people's stories, thus I talked to everyone. My mother was the same way. She was fascinated. She said, everybody's got a story, and she wanted you to tell yours to her. So a cab ride can either be filled with silence or it can be an interesting journey of discovery. I asked Tom, Tom how business was and he said, it's kind of slow. I asked why that was and he revealed an angry personality by snapping back, what do you think? Almost feeling sorry that I'd asked, I pursued the conversation a little further. I learned that Tom had been a fighter pilot off a carrier in Vietnam a programmer for IBM for many years, and that he was now struggling with his diabetes due to challenges with his HMO. In his late 50s, Tom resented the fact that his single-engine military flying experience didn't lead to a career as a commercial pilot. The veterans with multi-engine experience got those jobs. Tom was angry. Life had dealt him an apparently bad hand, and he was traveling down the road with heavy baggage from the store of resentment. If you have stopped too often in that store, perhaps you should start shopping elsewhere. I've been there. I don't go shopping there anymore in the store of resentment. The day after the wedding, I had tickets to a, a show, Mamma Mia, at the Mandalay Bay Hotel. The cab driver who took me there was Harry. In his early 30s, Harry seemed a little more upbeat about life than Tom. He was originally from Louisiana and had a slight southern tone to his speech. Tom had been in construction for a number of years, much of it on the incredible new hotels that have sprung up along the Strip in Vegas in recent years. Since my father was a carpenter and a builder, I wanted to know more about his work. As we headed toward the Mandalay Bay, Tom stated that he assembled many of the ornate columns in the casino there. He also had a lot of experience in a variety of finishing carpentry work. However, he was now tired of that and, while looking for something new, was driving a cab. Tom didn't know what he wanted to do in life now. How many of us have found ourselves in that spot? The way to define a new road is to write and declare the following affirmation. This might help you in case you're looking for a whole new direction in life. I gave this to our cab driver, Tom. It is, and you state a date that's a few months down the line, maybe six months from now, I have discovered my burning desire and I'm excited. It is a date six months from now. I've discovered my burning desire and I'm excited. And what you do is put this on the bedstand and just read it out loud the first thing every morning and the last thing every night. Program your brain as if it was a very expensive computer. As you've got more abilities in your brain than most computers man ever created. You'll be amazed what will happen in a few months. Suddenly you'll discover something say, wow, that's kind of cool. And by reading that affirmation out loud, the first thing each morning and the last thing each night, without analysis, as I said, you'll be directing your subconscious mind to search. Without focus and direction, the mind will simply go in circles and cause confusion. Cab driver number three was John. He drove me back from the Mandalay Bay after I saw a wonderful, rousing rendition of the show Mamma Mia. If you've never seen it, you've got to go. Oh, it's so cool. John had a pest control company in another state for 30 years and didn't want to do that anymore. A few years back, he moved to Las Vegas because there's a lot to do there. 
Now that he was in Vegas, his kids came to visit him more often. His wife of many years died a year ago. Unfortunately, John loves driving a cab. He gets through each night around 1 to 1.30 and uh, gets together with some of his driving buddies. According to John, we get together and lie to each other. How fun. It was evident from the moment we started talk, uh, that I started talking with John that uh, here was a happy man. Here was a happy man. He had the courage to change direction in life when he wanted something new to do. He had found a way to love what he currently does. Isn't that a secret to success? Because if you don't love what you do now, you'll never love something else. Find a way to love it. Although life had dealt him a difficult card with the death of his wife, he has found a way to be happy. John obviously understands that attitude is everything. Driver number four on the way to the airport was Robert. He has a wife and an ex-wife. The first wife, who doesn't drive, keeps their three kids. Although the two wives do not get along, Robert has arranged for the second wife to drive the ex-wife around. Yeah! Wow! Uh, that's what she has to do since the ex takes care of the kids most of the time, says Robert. Robert, concerning his wives, is at least making the best of a tough situation. The same couldn't be said for his son, who is 12 and has ADD. Although Robert states that he loves him, he also said the following, get this, quote, he never does anything. He's not interested in anything. He's always breaking his glasses. Wow, end quote. How much love can a son feel when his father is thinking and declaring such negative thoughts about him? We have to be careful. We have to be careful what we think about other people. Such thoughts are transmitted even if we don't actually say anything. This is significant with children, especially ones with challenges. In Dale Carnegie's book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, that I promote in seminars all over the world, he says, look for the good and as much as possible disregard the bad. Well, let me repeat that because that is profound. Look for the good and as much as possible disregard the bad. In other words, whatever we focus on expands. Whatever we focus on expands. Robert's focusing on his son's problems will actually perpetuate them. Well, take a close look and, and see if you relate to any one of these four cab drivers. If your vehicle in life is not heading in a direction you desire, perhaps it's time to take another road. So the affirmation for this episode of Boaz Power TV, it's a direction affirmation. You may want to write it down. Realizing the time is precious, I'm adjusting the direction in my life. Realizing that time is precious, I am adjusting the direction in my life. Thank you for joining me. If you like these messages and many people around the world find them highly beneficial, please forward this to five people you know. Suggest they go to my website, boazpower.com, and suggest they also sign up and subscribe to the free weekly broadcasts on Boaz Power TV. You are special. You are unique. You are destined for greatness. I see it in you. You are a champion. Have a powerful day. This has been Boaz Power TV. To comment, see other episodes, or to subscribe to this free broadcast, go to our blog at boazpower.com. That's boazpower.com. We're here to take your life to the next level.